Hello and welcome to today's webinar on accessing the expertise at NEHGS from home. My name is Ginevra Morse, the Online Education Coordinator at the New England Historic Genealogical Society. I'll be moderating today's event. NEHGS is a nonprofit organization supported by our members and donors. We provide resources and expertise in nearly all aspects of family history and are pleased to offer this webinar today for our members and friends around the world. Giving today's presentation will be David Allen Lambert, our Chief Genealogist, and Suzanne Stewart, the Director of Research Services here at NEHGS. They will discuss three of our research assistance programs, all of which you can take advantage of from home. David will start by talking about our Ask a Genealogist email service and our consultations, which can be conducted in person or over the phone. Then Suzanne will explain all of the services her team can help you with. They'll go over the differences between each service, the process for receiving help, and provide case examples for each. At any time during the presentation, please feel free to write a question in the panel to the right of your screen. And I see that some of you have already done that, so you're already ahead of the game. Uh, David and Suzanne will answer as many of those questions as possible in the last 15 to 20 minutes of the hour. If you don't see that question box, you can open the user panel by clicking on the icon of a white arrow with an orange background. This event is being recorded, and the video will be posted to our website in the next couple of days. And finally, if you stick around until the very end of the presentation, you'll be the first to hear about a special offer on our consultation service. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. Take it away, David. Thank you, Ginevra, and welcome everyone to today's presentation on accessing the expertise at NEHGS from home. Whether you are just beginning your family history or have been researching for years, all genealogists hit a brick wall at some point. After all, with each new generation, we're moving forward from the known to the unknown, and let's face it, a lot can be unknown. So, before I introduce you to some of the ways we can assist you in your research, let's do a quick poll. Have you ever hit a brick wall in the course of your family history research? A survey will appear on your screen. Go ahead and select yes or no, and uh, we'll know the results in just a moment. And when I say brick wall, I really mean any obstacle that's prevented you from identifying the next generation, filling in vital information, or solving a genealogical mystery. All right, well it says 99% of you have indeed come across some obstacle to over the course of your research. Like I said, we've all hit brick walls in our encounter of records, repositories, or historical time periods we're just not familiar with. Although it may seem like a solitary pursuit at times, genealogy it is very much a hobby in which we learn from others, and NEHGS provides expert assistance and advice for you to carry on with your own research. Beyond our online programs, such as the one you're currently attending, there are a number of ways you can actively engage with the experts at NEHGS and receive research assistance without even having to leave your own home. These services are available to all current members as well as the general public. I'll talk to you about two such services, Ask a Genealogist and Consultations. For these services, the experts that will assist you are the same experts you may work with during a visit to our library and archives in Boston. They have over 200 years of combined experience between them and can help you with more than just your New England research. In fact, we have staff with expertise in Canadian, Irish, English, Scottish, German, Italian, New York, the Midwest, and many other areas of research. If we didn't, haven't listed the geographic area of interest here, don't worry. We can help just about anyone with research of all sorts. We can help you get the most out of your online resources and your genealogical software questions as well. We can teach you to practice um, the best ways for analyzing records, organizing your research, and navigating different repositories and resources available. We can even assist you when it comes down in time to write and publish your family history. So first, I'm going to talk to you today about Ask a Genealogist, which is our email service. Ask a Genealogist is a free service that is open to both NEHGS members and the general public to receive reference assistance via email. Questions might be about where to find a particular record 
or a piece of information or to ask for tips on what to try next in your research. Our expert genealogists take turns answering these questions, and while they can't do the research for you, they will be able to provide suggestions on where to look for answers. Selected questions and responses are shared with the general public, so in a way you can think of this as a genealogical advice column. You can learn more about this service by going to the website shown on your screen. From there, you can submit a question using our online form and view an archive of previously answered questions. As you can see, the arrow that is on the screen will show you where you can submit a question. Before you submit a question, you may wish to familiarize yourself with what's already been answered. This will help you formulate your own question, and who knows, your question may have already been asked and answered. And that even if you don't have a question yet, these archive responses are also a great way for browsing on our website suggestions to help you with your research. In addition to posting the questions and answers on our website, we also feature those questions and answers that we believe may be of interest to a larger audience. You may see these submissions included in our e-newsletter, The Weekly Genealogist, in our quarterly member magazine, American Ancestors. Just a reminder that questions and responses may be made public and will be found in a variety of locations. If you prefer not to have your question published online or in the magazine, just let us know. One tip to keep in mind when submitting your question, because Ask a Genealogist is designed for reference questions that can be answered in less than a half hour or so, it's important to be specific. While our staff cannot undertake research on our behalf, providing as much information as you can gives our experts a greater context and they'll be able to assist you better. In your query, explain what you're researching. Give the names, dates, and places relating to the individual or family you need assistance with. List any sources you've already referenced or checked so we don't duplicate your efforts and be clear in your reference question itself. Here is an example of a reference question received from a patron. I have recently confirmed I am a third great grandson of a War of 1812 veteran. Is there any organization that is specifically concerned with War of 1812 descendants and research? In reply to this question, we answered yes the General Society of the War of 1812 will suit their needs. We gave a brief history of the organization and provided information on how to become a member of the society. We also supply, supplied them with a URL to their website and the organization's contact information. In another example from Ask a Genealogist, a patron asks, Recently, I was searching for births of my Catholic relatives in St. John, New Brunswick in the 1850s and 1860s. Can you recommend where I can start my search? We suggested that she start at the St. John Diocesan Archives. We provided all the contact information for that repository, gave a brief overview of its records and databases, explained the nature of birth records for New Brunswick, and we also provided a link to an article on the subject. With these two examples, you can get a better idea of the types of questions we'll answer through Ask a Genealogist. They appeal to a larger audience. They are seeking research assistance and not for research to be conducted for them, and they all are provided the necessary detail for us to successfully answer their question. Here's an example of a question that's probably not suitable for Ask a Genealogist. My great-grandfather, John Smith, was born somewhere in New York in 1845. Who were his parents? Well, this question is really asking for us to do research for them. Remember that Ask a Genealogist queries are generally reference questions and something we can answer in under a half hour. However, we may be able to guide the patron to an answer to this question during a one-on-one -on -one consultation. The patron could also contract work with our research for higher service, something Suzanne will discuss later on during the presentation. 
If you're looking for more one-on-one -on -one guided assistance, you may consider scheduling a consultation with one of our experts. Consultations are given over the phone and may be scheduled anywhere from 15 minutes to two hours or more. You will be paired up with a genealogist from our library staff who knows the area of the topic you are researching. There are also discounts for any HGS members. Consultations offer a great way to make progress in your research and get advice from an authoritative source. I will personally help schedule your consultation. I may also be the NEHS expert who consults with you on the matter. There are additional discounts and benefits for NEHS members. As I mentioned, the hourly rate for members at the research level is $60 per hour. Premium level members receive additional discounts on the hourly rate and free consultation time each year. To become a member of NEHS or to learn more about member benefits, visit our website at AmericanAncestors.org. To learn more about our consultation service and to submit a question, visit AmericanAncestors.org slash library. As you can see on the screen, you can submit your consultation order right from there. Again, be as specific as you can in your question. If you live locally and want an in-person consultation, you may be asked to bring in your family charts or research papers. Once you submit the question, I will match you up with an expert and schedule the consultation for you. Our first example of a consultation question is, my ancestor served as a private in the Revolutionary War from Massachusetts. How can I locate where he fought? During the consultation, I discussed what a research strategy might be where needed to answer this question. In this case, I suggested that he should, quote, adopt the company in which the ancestor served in and research the history of the company. Researching the military and pension records of the fellow soldiers in his company may shed light on where your ancestor's company traveled during the war and what battles or skirmishes they were involved in. From there, I provided information on what records to locate and utilize for this type of search, and I supplied tips on how to analyze those records. In the second example, the patron asked, how do I go about locating and analyzing probate records for a New Hampshire family in the 1720s to 1760s? First, we help the patron locate all the relevant probate files within our microtext collection here at the library. New Hampshire probates before 1771 are included in the provincial probate records on microfiche here at NEHGS. We assisted in the analysis of witnesses mentioned in those records, which helped prove the identity of the brick wall ancestor. These two examples of consultation requests lend themselves to more one-on-one -on -one guided assistance with an expert. We can really go through your research with you and make, offer suggestions and best practices along the way. Consultations help you with an immediate question, but can also help you become a better researcher. And finally, here's an example of what not to ask in your consultation. I'm leaving for Ireland next week. I'd like to know where my immigrant ancestors came from so I can visit their home while I'm there. Can you help? Well, with more lead time, we may be able to help you answer this broad question during a consultation, but there is no rush option for consultations. For this, you have to turn to our research for hire service, which has a rush option, and you might be able to deliver an answer for you right away. And with that, I will now turn things over to my colleague, Suzanne Stewart. Thank you, David. And again, thank you everyone for joining us today. My name is Suzanne Stewart. I am the Director of Research Services here at NEHGS. I oversee a separate team of 11 full and part-time expert research genealogists who can assist you in a variety of ways and on a variety of topics. Our expertise covers not only New England, but all of the United States as well as overseas. And unlike the two services David has already mentioned, our research services team can do in-depth research on your behalf, whether it is a two-hour project or a 40-hour project. So just a quick overview of the program. 
before I explain what the various services are. Both member and non-members can, can contract research from us. There may be different rates depending on the service, but any HGS members always receive a discount. You can see the cost for our hourly research on the current slide. Whoops, right there. We also have a rush service option, and we gladly offer gift certificates for research and or charts if you would like to give the gift of family history to a friend or relative. After the research is complete, we send the client a detailed report of our findings. We state where we looked, what we were looking for, and what we found. We cite all of our sources, and we attach copies of relevant documents. We end with a concise conclusion and suggestions for next steps, estimating the time it will take to execute each suggestion. If you'd like to learn more about our services, the process, or rate structures, please visit AmericanAncestors.org. From there, you can also complete your request using a number of online order forms. So exactly what services do we offer? Research services is really an umbrella term that includes a number of ways we can assist you. I'll go into a few of these in greater detail, but generally, we can conduct research on your behalf on an hourly basis. The researchers examine primary and secondary sources from both the NEHGS library and other repositories to complete your request. If you've hit a brick wall or have come to a seemingly unsolvable problem, we can help. We can obtain probate records from our online catalog for you and send you copies of those as well. We can help you apply for and obtain dual citizenship to countries such as Ireland and Italy. If you think you're eligible for admission to a lineage society, such as the Mayflower Society, the DAR, Colonial Dames, or any other society, we can do the research for you and complete the application process on your behalf. Many people have also come to us for help in organizing their research and files. And we're happy to help with that kind of project as well. We have new clients who come in with a pile of papers and ask us to organize their papers for them. We will put all of your information into an easy to read format. If you're looking to complete a family history publication or better understand the life of your forebears, we can write biographical narratives about your ancestors. This is the type of report that we do most often as it fills in your ancestors' lives. We can also research and create beautiful custom charts. I'll show you a few examples in a minute. If you find a publication in our library, we can copy pages for you. We can retrieve manuscripts from the NEHGS Special Collections and copy these as well. Research for Hire. You can submit your research request using our online order forms or by email, phone, or in person. As I mentioned, we receive research requests even beyond New England. A request might be very specific, as in find exactly where in Cork, Ireland my great-grandmother came from, or something more involved, such as research all generations from my great-grandparents back to my immigrant ancestors. I want to know what country they came from. The length of time needed to find a solution to your request will really depend on the scope of your question. So be sure to consider that when you're phrasing your request. Be specific with what it is that you would like us to find. We will ask you to provide us with the documentation that you have so that we don't duplicate efforts. We want to provide you with information that is new and exciting to you. So once you've submitted your request, we will send it to a member of our research team who has the expertise necessary to work on your project. They will examine primary and secondary sources from the NEHGIS library and other repositories to help answer your request. We will prepare a written report of our findings stating where we looked, what we were looking for, citing all sources. We will tell you exactly what we found and include copies of, the, of these documents pertaining to your family. We write a detailed summary of our research as well as suggestions for continued research if need be with an estimated amount of time we believe it will take us to do this. 
The final report and supporting documentation is reviewed for quality, consistency, and accuracy, and then mailed to you. Research for hire requests are generally completed within 10 to 12 weeks from the time of receipt. If you need it sooner, we do have the rush option. Different types of reports that we write are biographical narratives in the Anantafel style, qualification outlines for lineage societies, and then your standard report where we state where we looked, what we were looking for, and what we found, citing all sources, and attaching all documents relevant to your request. I will show you examples of these types of reports now. This first report is what we refer to as a biographical narrative set up in the Anantafel style. An Anantafel is a numbering system that starts with the focused individual, usually the client, and we continue back through the generations. We start a new page with each generation so that we can add narrative and it is easy to read. We can also add images wherever you would like. This report is called a qualification outline. A qualification outline is a type of report that we do for people applying to lineage societies. We start with the client, generation one, and list out only their vital information, footnoting each event and attaching their vital records. The next page is generation two. We list out the parents of generation one noting each birth, death, and marriage, footnoting all sources, and attaching the relevant documents. We continue on back, identifying the parents of the individual who is a descendant of the person for who you are applying to a society under. For instance, if you want to join the Sons of the American Revolution, then we would trace you back to the soldier who fought. Each generation has its own page. Keep in mind that it's not always possible to locate vital records. It all depends on the time period and the location. In these cases, you must use other sources as proof that show the relationship, such as probate records, land records, etc. This is an example of a two-hour project. The client would like to know more about Thomas Nichols, who arrived in America in 1636 from England. He believes that his wife was named Rebecca and that he had two brothers, James and George. We always first check the publications here at NEHGS, as well as our manuscripts collection. We have an amazing collection of resources. We first found Thomas Nichols in a publication in our library entitled Topographical Dictionary of 2,885 English Immigrants to New England from 1620 to 1650. Here, we learned that Thomas Nichols came into Hingham, Mass. from the English parish of Coggeshell. Further research into our publications, we next found the text entitled Pioneers of Massachusetts, a Descriptive List. This is a great text in that the information is taken from records of the colonies, churches, and other early records. We found a lot of information about the family in this book and we're able to put together a great narrative on both families, the Nichols and the Jocelyn. Continuing our research, we located another publication in our library entitled New England Marriages prior to 1700. Here we found both of Thomas's marriages. We then found two handwritten books from the clerk's office in Hingham. The death records of Thomas and Rebecca were recorded in these books. This confirms what we had found earlier. We end our research with a concise conclusion, followed by, if necessary, suggestions for further research. We estimate the time it will take us for this further research. Our last page is what we always include at the end of the report, showing the documents that we have attached. We attached copies of the three publications that we found in our library that gave us great information on the two families. We also attached the death records of Rebecca Jocelyn Nichols and her husband Thomas Nichols. To reiterate, 
In the town records mentioned earlier, we were able to locate the documentation of both Th Rebecca and Thomas's deaths. In the report, we attached the entire page for the client. Here we have clipped the page so it's a little easier for you to read. First is the death record of Rebecca Jocelyn Nichols, which states that Rebecca Nichols, the wife of Thomas Nichols, deceased on the 22nd day of September, 1675. This is the death of Thomas Nichols. This states that Thomas Nichols Sr. died the 8th day of November, 1696. These are the types of documents we, which we provide you with in all of our research reports. As mentioned earlier, we also offer a quick turnaround photocopy service. If you cannot visit the NEHDS library in person, we can search and copy books, journals, and rare books for, for you. You can place your request online, and when you do, you'll need to supply the title of the book or article, the author, and the page or page numbers you'd like copied. If you aren't sure of the page number, we can search the books for names of individuals, families, specific dates, and other information. If you don't have the exact title or author information, you can search our online catalog. There is a maximum of five sources that can be requested at a time. The cost for photocopies differs from that of our research for higher service. For members, there is a service charge of $25. For non-members, the service charge is $35. Requests are generally completed within one to two weeks from receipt, you can also ask to receive the copies in the form of emailed scans instead of mailed paper copies. You can also have one-of-a-kind materials from our R. Stanton Avery Special Collections copied. However, this service is only available to NEHDS members. Again, you can find a listing of our special collections through our online catalog. Because our manuscript collections are delicate and contain several elements, we first need to confer with a member of the manuscripts department to see how much of the collection we are allowed to copy. You can find the fees for manuscript requests online at our website. Over the course of the last several years, we've expanded our resources, our services to include the creation of highly personalized, detailed, and colorful family history charts. These charts can be names and dates, or they can include more detailed information. Using the Research for Hire model, we can conduct the research for you. We can also work with existing information that you might have to create a personalized keepsake complete with names, dates, locations, and family stories. So if you already have your information, we can create a chart using your information. If you don't have information, or would you like us to find more documentation of your family, we can perform research and use our research to create a chart. This is a fan chart. It is the ancestry of one person, John Edmund Cavanaugh III, and it shows his direct ancestors. We can add information in about each person, but we are limited to space. On this chart, the client wanted to see each person's name, birthplace and birth date, death place and death date. We also added a little narrative on the surname Kavanaugh in the upper left corner, as well as his mother's surname Quinn in the upper right corner. This is a customized chart. Again, it shows the ancestry of one person, John Edmund Kavanaugh III. We can add as much information as you would like when we create a chart such as this. On this particular chart, the client wanted to see birth or baptism location and date, death location and date, and marriage location and date, as well as the port of entry, where the person resided, and where they were buried. This chart actually goes back to 1663, but we aren't able to show the entire chart here. This is just a small clip of the actual chart. 
If you'd like even more information on the Research Services team, be sure to pick up a copy of the 2014 winter issue of American Ancestors magazine. The cover story is, hire, is on hiring a researcher and provides more tips on how to get the most from your re request, as well as additional case studies. I hope you've enjoyed learning about research services and what we offer. I look forward to answering your questions and hopefully working with you in the future. Thank you, David and Suzanne, for your presentation. Uh, so before we move on to your questions, here's a quick summation of how our experts can assist you and how those services differ. Again, Ask a Genealogist is a free service that operates kind of like a research advice column. Our consultations offer one-on-one -on -one research assistance, either over the, phone, over the phone or in person. And our research services team can provide a number of offerings, such as research for hire, photocopying services, lookups, charts, and much more. Again, all of these research assistance programs are open to both NEHGS members and non-members. You can contact each at the email addresses on the screen, but I will also provide uh, that contact information as well as those URLs in a follow-up email that I'll send you tomorrow. All right, so let's get to your questions. Again, if you have a question about any of the services covered in today's presentation, uh, please go ahead and type it in the question panel to the right of your screen. Again, if you don't see that question box, you can expand your user pro, uh, panel by clicking on the button with a white arrow against an orange background. All right, so this first question is for, um, for David. Beth asks, uh, prior to a phone consultation, may we send PDFs of relevant research findings for the expert to look at? Yes, many times people will send PDFs, Word files, or just put the text in the email that they send to us. So that is perfectly all right to do. And we, in fact, encourage it. It gives us a better chance to uh, analyze the material and uh, have it on hand when we uh, work with you. Great, and let's see, another question for you, David. Um, Barbara says, I have a brick wall in New Hampshire. Should I ask the New Hampshire Historical Society for help, or should I ask you? Well, I would never discount another organization's capabilities, but I would also entertain you to contact us. Uh, we have one of the best collections for New Hampshire primary sources between vital records, probates, deeds, uh, published histories and published genealogies, we have been on the forefront collecting New Hampshire history since we started in 1845. And that's not even to say the countless hundreds of thousands of materials we have in our archives collection that may deal with New Hampshire, a particular town or family that you're dealing with. So we would be delighted to entertain your New Hampshire questions. Great, and Suzanne, here's a question for you. Peggy says, I want to verify that my research is accurate. When hiring a researcher, is it best to send them everything that I have done so far, or do they prefer to start from scratch? Oh, that is a great question. We Actually, we receive that question quite frequently. We ask that you send us everything that you have, and we're very good at verifying and do that often. But we can use your documentation and to cut down on the research time, whether we use it as a clue or we, we prove that it's not true. But we would suggest that you definitely send us everything that you have. Okay, and here's another question for you, Suzanne. Um, a few people are asking about the foreign language skills of our researchers. Um, do we have experts who can read records written in other languages as well as correspond with, uh, say, repositories and archives in other countries? Um, yes, we do. We have um, a variety of researchers and talent here. We have um, a French-speaking, a German-speaking, an Italian-speaking genealogists here. We can really, we're adept at many, many countries, so I wouldn't let that discourage you from passing along your question. Okay, and uh, David, here's another question for you. Um, when scheduling, scheduling a consultation, um, can the patron request a certain expert for them to work with? 
Most definitely. In fact, we have a lot of repeat customers for many of our experts. Uh, it could be that you worked with someone this week and next week you want to meet with them again, or it could be a follow-up months or maybe a year or more down the road. Uh, so you're very apt uh, to have a favorite researcher to work on a problem, or you may want to try a new one, but either way, we'll be more than happy to reconnect you with a previous expert or introduce you to a new one. Okay, and Suzanne, here's another question for you. Uh, Deborah says that she's found the online order form a bit clunky. Is it possible to include, say, a Word document or other attachments along with the form to fully explain her research request? Uh, yes, another great question. You can definitely send us a Word document. You can attach it to an email from us. At, you can send it to research at nehgs.org. And we are actually in the process of revamping our website, and we hope to have a little, a little button on there that you can attach documents to when you send in. But also be aware that the box is there. You can really fill in a lot of information, but definitely attach documents to us in an email or put them in the post mail to us. Wonderful. And here's kind of a, a general question uh, for both of you to answer. David, why don't you go first? Um, Phyllis asks, what does your dream request look like? Uh, so in other words, what makes it easier for you to help us? And maybe if you could talk uh, especially about consultations. What's your dream request? My dream request would be to find out the patron was actually related to me, and I could surprise them with photographs and the work's already done for them and just attach it. Well, of course, that has happened in the past. But um, I also like to see a uh, request a, or come in that it's a family I've worked with before, so that, I mean, I guess that's a dream come true, or a town that I'm familiar with. But we like challenges here, too. So um, it doesn't have to be a dream question. It could be a nightmare of a brick wall for you, and we'll still uh, undertake the uh, question for you. But if it's a dream question, if it's laid out nicely with all the details, a uh, specific question as to what you're looking for, and perhaps what you've already uh, looked at, will make our job a lot easier, and we'll streamline our response right back to you. So I suppose that would be the dream question. And uh, Suzanne, how about you answer that question as well. What does the dream request look like for research services? Well, we always like to know exactly what it is that you want. That way, you'll be happy with what we give you. And we always like you to pass along what you've found and where you've looked. I've mentioned this before. That way, we won't send you anything that you already have. That's the last thing we want to do is to duplicate efforts. We want to send you new information that you don't know about. But again, just if you can definitely tell us what it is exactly that it, that that you want from us that would be fantastic okay and um, David here's a question for you uh, Mary says that she'll be in Boston in mid-june how far in advance uh, does she need to schedule an appointment for a consultation Mary, you can give us a call right today, and I'd be glad to um, take the details down and schedule a consult. Um, we have scheduled consults usually up to a couple of weeks in advance. We like to have that much of a lead way at least. That way we can make sure that we have the expert on hand to work with you on the problem. Um, we've had cases where people have come in and said, can I have a consult today? And if scheduling permits, we can do that. But we do like to ask usually up to two weeks so we can look a little in advance. June would be perfectly fine to book this early in April. OK, and here's a great question from Elliot who asks, uh, what do we do when we hit a brick wall? Uh, so David, why don't you uh, answer that first? What happens if one of our experts hits a brick wall while working with uh, a patron during a consultation? Well, when we're having a consultation, a lot of the resources you might think are books, microfilm, microfiche, CD-ROMs, but it's also our staff. The experts at NEHGS offer something that no online service can do. So I like to turn to other colleagues. There have been many times over the years where I've gotten an education during a consultation myself by just talking to someone. Something might come up in a consultation that may be a little extra than what we had known originally they were going to ask about. Uh, or perhaps I get on the phone to an expert I know ahead of time get a little education myself and familiarize with the sources or another repository so I can better educate our patron 
uh, in the experience. So we make do as uh, case by case comes up and quite often we pull in other people on the staff uh, if we are stuck ourselves. No brick walls are completely unbreakable uh, at any HGS. We try to find a way to knock them all down. Great. Thanks, David. Um, here's a question for Suzanne. Um, Laurie asks, what do you need in order to create a custom chart? Um, hi, Laurie. To create a custom chart, we need to know what you want on the chart. Who does the chart start with? And then how far back do you want it to go? If you can, if you can pass in your information to us, all your documentation or the family software that you have, whatever you have your, however you have your information set up, we can take a look at it, lay it out, and see what's in there. It really depends on what you want in the chart. Okay, great. Thanks, Suzanne, and thanks, Laura. Uh, Laurie for that question. Um, Linda asks, uh, what kind of assistance can you provide with dual citizenship requests, um, such as, you know, can we identify and retrieve records for them? Um, Suzanne, I know that's something that your, your team helps with a lot. Could you maybe explain that a little bit more? Right. So what we need to do is prove that your ancestor was born in that country. So we start with you and we work our way backwards collecting all vital information and then you would submit it to that country for dual citizenship. We would tap into resources here and resources over there depending on where the person lived, where they were born, where they died, where they got married. Okay, and a question about the forms. David, maybe you can answer this. Um, do the forms that we have online help with question formulation? I mean, is there any kind of guidance as you fill out the form? Well, the form itself is set up so you can kind of express the main topic, uh, the region, and basically have enough room to fill in what you're looking for or maybe what you've already tried. So um, I find that nobody has complained that there's not enough wiggle room to type in all their question. And I always say if you have a problem and you want to add more, pick up the phone, call any HGS, talk to me. I'd be more than happy to take further notes on your questions or uh, talk to you on the phone about it. Okay, and Kim asks, Suzanne, this is a, a question for you. Kim asks, um, or says, I can see that the amount of research time could quickly mount up to a lot of money, depending on the complexity of the problem. Um, can we obtain an estimate before we decide to go ahead? She says, I realize that it may be difficult to give an initial estimate, but would welcome your comments. Oh, absolutely, Kim. We always decide on on the amount of time we're going to put into, into your request, and that is something that I, I can suggest to you, and then you make the final authorization. We usually split it, maybe four to six hours or five to eight hours. We do have a minimum of two hours. But depending on the request and what it is that you want really dictates the amount of time that is put into it. If it's a lineage society application, we're doing the qualification outline. and That all, dep all depends on how much information you already have how much documentation you already have, but those, those projects generally take about 9 to 11 hours or more depending on how much documentation that you have. If it's something a little bit simpler like that two-hour project that I showed you, we can usually have a good idea of how much time to estimate before we start, but we always, we always talk about that with the person before the research is started. Unless you sign up online and, and put your request in that way, then, then you're, you're dictating how many hours we put into it. But you always have the option to continue on. So we'll, when we send you those suggestions for further research, if we haven't answered what it is you want, we give you a continuation sheet, and you can sign that or call us and ask us to continue on. Okay, and uh, Bob asks, uh, when submitting a brick wall case, do you prefer us to disclose one or more theories with reasons, or would that somehow bias the researcher? Um, so, uh, Suzanne, if you could answer that, that would be great. 
If it's a, a long-standing 30-year project, brick wall that you have, we will probably ask that you submit your different ideas and we can either disprove or prove those theories. So I think it all depends on how much work has already been put into it. If we haven't put anything into it, we, we might not want to see that yet. We might want to see what we can come up with first. But that's a really good question. Okay, so we've answered a lot of your questions. If we haven't gotten to your question, um, please feel free to, uh, to contact us. You might want to schedule a consultation at consultations at nehgs.org or hire our research services team, research at nehgs.org. Again, I will include these email addresses and the URLs to their web pages in the email that I will send you tomorrow. So for that special offer that I mentioned at the start of the presentation, uh, between now and the end of May, you can save $10 on a one-hour consultation. Just mention the promo code CS514 at the time of scheduling your consultation by email or by phone. If you submit your consultation request using the online form, there is a promotion code field uh, right here at the bottom, so you can just type in CS514 there. Remember, you have until the end of May to take advantage of this offer, so don't delay. And thank you again for joining us today. As you leave the event, you'll have the opportunity to fill out a survey and give us your feedback. As we continue to expand our webinars and online offerings, any and all feedback is extremely helpful. So I do thank you in advance. Be sure to explore our website, AmericanAncestors.org, which offers access to millions of records covering New England, New York, and beyond. And if you're ever in the Boston area, please feel free to stop by our research library and archives. We're open to the public and hold a vast collection of published genealogies, biographies, local histories, microfilms, manuscripts, and more. And if you'd like to access more how-to resources or learn about upcoming online educational programs, please visit our online learning center, AmericanAncestors.org slash learning hyphen center. I hope to see you at our online programs in the future. Goodbye for now. <laughs>